So let's continue on with my Star Wars reviews, um, basic vlogs, and talk about Rogue One, which is the next chronological Star Wars theatrical film released um, in the timeline. So Rogue One came out in 2016. It was the second Disney uh, Lucasfilm released film. And it's interesting to see Rogue One because the idea of it, without the execution of it, the idea of it is pretty incredibly simple because it's the opening crawl for a new hope uh rebels have obtained the death star plans and the movie centered around that and looking at it as a whole for these spin-off star wars movies i really enjoyed both of them with solo and this one and this one in particular has a lot of great things or a lot of great entertaining things about it so let's get started um with I'd say the basic plot, like I said, is just that there's this character, Jin Erso, and she her fa she has a father named Galen Erso who had created the, the uh, flaw in the Death Star. So she has to bring this information forward, and she's the one who will be important to getting the Death Star plans while uh, encountering a ragtag group of, peop of rebels, like Star Wars usually is. So looking at it from that basic story... I thought it was pretty solid. Um, it's directed by Gareth Edwards, who directed the Godzilla 2014, which I thought was pretty boring, honestly. I wasn't a huge fan of that one. Um, I haven't been a fan of the American Godzillas. I haven't really seen the Japanese ones, which is ludicrous to say, but I I need to watch those eventually. But I've only seen the American Godzilla movies, and they've been pretty bad or pretty whatever. So, uh, But Gareth Edwards is the director of this movie. And, and looking at this one... It's weird because you could tell there's a lot of reshoots for this one. You could tell that this movie really was in in a lot of development that with the producers probably at Disney just saying, we want this, we want this. Um, I feel like the ending scene is a byproduct of that where Darth Vader comes and kills some people, um, which I think is, as a Star Wars fan, it is one of the coolest moments ever um, from a fanboy point of view. But it's just funny to see that in this movie because I felt like at first they were really trying to be not like not connected to the main Star Wars films. Um, it is really its own thing, and I really do appreciate that. Um, and looking at the characters, I think that the characters are pretty all right. Like they're not amazing. They're not characters that I truly love like the full franchise, but I think that they're all right. Um, Jen Erso, Felicity Jones, I thought was solid. Um, she was fine. And I like Diego Luna as Cassian Andor. Um, and then the two guys, um, Bays and... God, I'm blanking on the other guy's name. But the two Asian guys who go and are just badasses. They're awesome. Um, Chir Chirut and Bays. That's what they are. Both their names. Um, they both are really awesome. And it's cool to see Donnie Yen in a Star Wars movie. That's pretty fun. Um, and then Alan Tudyk as K2SO, the smart mouthy robot that... Well, he's a smart mouth, but he doesn't realize he is. He, uh, but he really should realize that he's a smart ass because I real I feel like the way he talks, it comes off that way. But I don't know if internally he thinks that. Like whenever he says, "I'll be there for you, Jin," Cassian told me to. Like like jokes like that work really well. Um, so I do like the characters. Um, and I didn't even mention them all, but th those are the ones that I can remember the most. But uh, looking at the characters, I do enjoy them. I thought they were all fun and enjoyable, or pretty solid. Um, like I said, the story as a whole I thought was interesting. I liked the elaboration on just continuing on with A New Hope, like right before it. I did like just the threads that they connected to A New Hope. Like stuff that you just, you never saw. And I know that it's a Star Wars thing where like they go and explain the mythology as they go along from the original trilogy with the prequel trilogy with this. They always, and then the Mandalorian, um, which is a precursor to the new sequel trilogy, which so far hasn't had a lot of references to it. It's had a few, but Star Wars always has had that thing where they always connect back to the original trilogy or they have pre prequels, precursors to trilogies. Um, so it, it's really interesting to see how they keep doing that in this franchise and I and I still enjoy most Star Wars stuff so like theatrical movies and the shows like I enjoy most of them so I don't have a problem with that I, I did like seeing the connectivity they had between this and A New Hope and honestly how it looks 
it's so cool to see the genetic like similarities with how a new hope from 1977 looks it does feel like a 70s movie with how the people are hairstyled um it, how it looks it looks like a bleak war movie and i like the bleak colors in this one i like that this one isn't very happy go lucky and how it looks um i thought that was really cool and oh and speaking of characters i forgot to mention krennic which i did enjoy and i like how in a new hope when i rewatched a new hope after this they had an empty chair so i guess that's where krennic Chris, since Krennic dies at the end, that's where he, why he's gone. But I thought that was hilarious seeing that. But, uh, but I did enjoy Krennic. I thought it was cool seeing Tarkin back again. But if, if I didn't know that, that Peter Cushing was dead, um, he's been dead forever, um, since 1994. If I didn't know he was dead, I wouldn't have really thought twice about the guy, like the, the, uh, the CGI, like, uh, face performance of this guy who plays Peter Cushing um but since I know that I'm constantly looking for like a problem and like it, the way he talks the way he moves and there's a couple moments where Tarkin makes mouth movements and they don't look right um they look pretty slowed down and compared to how he talks so it's interesting to see Tarkin in this movie, and I do like that. I think that it's cool seeing that, and I thought that the CGI is good. Like, it is really good, and it works, um, but is recognizable CGI. But, I mean, I'm not going to complain about that because all CGI is CGI. Like, whether you like it or not, it's CGI, and, and I just think it's cool seeing integration of this character into the show, into the movie. Um, and especially since it's right before A New Hope, so it makes total sense having him connected. So that's cool seeing Tarkin back, even though it's CG. Um, and Galen Erso, I thought it was fine. Uh, Mad, Mads Mikkelsen, that's cool seeing him in Star Wars thing. So awesome to see Mads in this. Um, the first two acts for me are, I think, pretty solid. Like, it's weird because... The first two acts I enjoy, and I was invested throughout. Like, I did feel enough for these characters. I did enjoy it enough. But looking at it as a whole, the thing that I love the most is the third act. Um, the third act is freaking fantastic. It's one of the best last acts in any Star Wars movie. Um, and I love that this spinoff movie gets that compliment. I love that this spinoff movie has a lot of stuff that I did really, really like a lot. The ending in particular. Um, I love the fact that it's on a new planet, Scarif, on this, like, beach planet. Um, and I really like the fact that you see the Death Star at the end whenever they all die. Like, the Death Star go down and shoot down this planet, but it doesn't destroy the planet. And they did that earlier in the movie, too, on that other planet, uh, Wobani, where... It doesn't, the Death Star doesn't destroy the planet, it just destroys a central era area in the planet. And that's what it does at Scarif at the end, where it doesn't destroy the whole planet. Or maybe it does, but it doesn't show it. It just looks like it's just in a fraction of the planet getting destroyed. Like, and I think they even say in the movie, like Krennic or Tarkin say something like, that the power is not strong enough yet of, like, for the Death Star. Like, they've, they've only experienced some of its power. Um, which why, which is why in A New Hope, whenever Leia's planet Alderaan gets destroyed, it's a full, like, blast and it's gone. So, um, it's cool to see, like, the point of view of them on the planet as well, whenever Jin and everybody are running away on Wobani, um, uh, while Sagar like, dies there, but I like how they're running away and getting on the ship and flying on the ship as this planet is getting destroyed, or as part of this planet is getting destroyed. So I think that's really, really cool. And I really just love the idea that this Star Wars movie felt fresh as, as a Star Wars film. Um, like like Solo, this movie doesn't have any like lightsaber fights, um, or I guess it's it's got a, it's got lightsabers in both, but it's not a fight. Um, like in Solo, there was Darth Maul at the end showing his lightsaber; he didn't do anything. And then in this one, there's. Darth Vader um, killing all these rebels with this lightsaber, but there's no lightsaber fights. There's really little references to the Jedi, which I think is cool. I like how mystic it's kept. Even though I do love the prequels, I do like how in this part of the timeline, you look at it from, it, it has to be cryptic because people don't know what these Jedi really are. They aren't, a lot of them aren't really experiencing what they were before. So I think that that is a cool idea. And I like how they keep, keep that connection here. 
Um, also, I keep going back to characters because I forgot. Um, I like seeing Bail Organa back. Uh, Jimmy Smith's. That's awesome. I definitely a great connection to the prequel trilogy because I like seeing him in this. And, of course, it's such a wah-wah moment because he says, I'm going to give these Death Star plans to Leia. Uh, or no, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and tr I'll trust her with my life on what's gonna happen, and then he dies in A New Hope, so it sucks. But it's great seeing Jimmy Smith's back. That's awesome. Um, really cool connection um, to the prequel trilogy, and really really enjoy that. So like I said, I keep going back and forth. Like my mind always just randomly goes everywhere in this review in these reviews. But the ending of the movie. Like I said, the first two acts are solid. I do enjoy it. Um, I do think the la first two acts are good, and I think they work. But I think the last act is freaking great, where they have the Death Star by Scarif. Jin and Cassian have to get the get the plans. Um, while everybody slowly dies in their group, and every time you, do, you see them die, it's all really, really sad, and it's really effective. Um, these actors, even though they're doing basic you know, Star Wars-y kind of moments where, like, they don't have fully have, like, great emotional depth to them. You do feel for them whenever they die. Like, I did feel for all these characters. So they gave me enough characterization in each one of these characters to make me feel about them whenever they die. And every time they die, like, because a lot of them just um, die automatically in, like, this final fight, but it, it works. Um... Like I said, I really liked that. And I really liked between um, Jin and Krennic, where Krennic tells her, like, like it's over, like you lost. And how she says, like, I've just told the whole plan how to light it up, how to destroy this Death Star. Um, and then Cassian shoots him down. And then I love the fact that Krennic watches in sadness. The Death Star just comes up and shoots down and starts destroying everything. But Krennic, just that look he gives... Um, Really, really great. And great performance by Min Ben Mendelsohn. Like, he is great over-the-top performance. Like, he's great. He's really awesome. Um, but I'll tell you, man, that scene where they... And with the music as well. The music is incredible. And it's not John Williams. Um, I forgot who it is. I think it's the guy... Is it Alexander Displat? Um, I can't remember if it's him or not. But the score is fantastic, regardless of who it is. But, uh, but the score at the end where... It's such a human moment where Jin and Cassian are both they see the they see the Death Star shoot down and it's gonna destroy everything they're in. Um they're going down the elevator, they're just looking at each other like it's weird. They're looking at each other, like not in a romantic connection, but they look at each other like two humans that are that know in a in a few minutes' time they're dead, they're gonna be gone, and there's nothing they can do about it. They're trapped on this planet. Um it is just one of the most human moments in any Star Wars movie, just watching these characters with that dialogue just look at each other like everything they're thinking you can you can easily tell. And it's just one of those chilling moments with the score, with the acting, um, and that scene of them both getting into the sand and just watching from a distance that wave coming towards them. And they just hold hands and then they just hug each other and then sit there and then it just engulfs them and they they're dead and it's just such a fantastic emotional moment again with not a lot of dialogue there's some but just it really blows me away and how great it is um emotionally and uh then of course you get the big fanboy moment because of course i'm a giant star wars fan of the movies like i love the movies like i said i love some of the expanded stuff i haven't i haven't delved much into the expanded disney stuff I've read a couple books um i've played a couple of the games uh, I've watched all the shows besides Resistance that are Disney, and, I, and I'm going to watch that soon. But but uh, you get to that fanboy moment, because like I said, I love Star Wars. And that moment of the Rebels getting the plans, Darth Vader coming in and just wrecking shit up. Just destroying people, just killing all these Rebels left, left and right. And it is the scariest iteration of Darth Vader I think I've ever seen. Um, the original Star Wars trilogy, Vader is great, but in New Hope, he's just kind of like, all he does is choke a couple people. And he's kind of like a mustache-twirling villain. Like, there's not much to him in A New Hope. You really need the prequels to understand that this is a character that has gone through a lot. But in A New Hope, he's there just to be the secondary villain. Because I feel like Tarkin is honestly the real villain. Because Tarkin controls Vader. Um, and then in Empire, Vader is more intimidating whenever he and Luke fight. And then in 
Return of the Jedi, he becomes Anakin Skywalker again. So you don't get a whole lot in the original trilogy of Darth Vader being completely and utterly evil. Like, you've got moments of him doing evil stuff in the original trilogy, but it's never to this extent. Like, you never see him go and slaughter, like, a million people at once. Um, and it makes sense, especially with the prequels, where Anakin slaughtered all these kids, like, back up and down, and then watching him do this to rebels, like, uh, rebel adults. Like, fantastic. Um, just from a fanboy standpoint, love it, love it. Um, and then we get to the very ending where, like I said, uh, whenever a new hope starts, their ship is being blockaded by, or not blockaded, like, uh, followed by an, an one of the empire ships. And in the end, at the end of this, like they escape quickly while Vader watches on a pillar, like just wait, he's going to get them in just a couple minutes in a new hope. Like it's going to, it's literally connection. You can just watch these movies back and forth, literally both of them together and feel no, and feel very seamless. Um, but then you get a great final moment of, I didn't expect this. I didn't expect to see a set 1977 Carrie Fisher, Princess Leia. Um, they show her the Death Star plans and she says hope like she does in the original. Um, and, or no, she doesn't say that in the original. It's just because Jen keeps saying hope throughout the movie, but she says hope as the final word for the movie and that's how it ends. And literally you connect these two movies back and forth. It's great. Um, with the Princess Leia thing, I've got to mention, it is like Tarkin where it's like, it's so close to being ultra realistic and ultra like she's actually there. But then there's a couple moments where, like, you see... It's only for a couple seconds with this character, where Princess Leia turns around. You see her face. It's just a little off. Not in a way where it's, like, completely distracting, but you can tell it's off just because you know it's not from 1977. You know that's not Carrie Fisher now, whenever Carrie Fisher was alive in 2016, um, before she passed. She at least got to see this uh, final thing, but it you can tell it's not Carrie Fisher like now like you could tell that it's a cg creation um but i think it's a really good cg creation like tarkin um with a few minor flaws to it like just how it looks but still i thought that the execution of that was still really great and i really do love rogue one in a lot of ways like i love it for the third act um i really like the idea of it just being a kind of fresh star wars movie like in terms of how it feels like it doesn't feel like the other ones in a way even though it's very much so st like story-wise like it's about a group of rebels going off and fighting people like fighting stormtroopers like it's similar but i feel like it's different enough and i feel like they get did a good balance um even though the ending with the darth vader thing i feel like probably wasn't originally there i might be wrong but i bet disney was like let's put that in there but I'm fine with that because as a fan of Star Wars, I was, I felt entertained and I felt overjoyed to watch that. So, and Rogue One, I've watched so many times since it came out in 2016. I saw it twice in the theater. I've seen it so many times on Blu-ray. Um, just since I just rewatched it, I still love it. Still think it's a great, fun uh, Star Wars movie. Um, better, way better than a spin-off movie deserves to be of Star Wars, I think, honestly. Because um, I think it's up there. I think it's not one of the best, but it's close. So that's it on Rogue One, pretty much all I could say. So uh, that's it, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Take care.